Hi, everyone. This is Tony Nash with Complete Intelligence. Thanks for joining us uh, for another quick hit. Uh, these are short talks we have with industry experts uh, to really hear their thoughts on global supply chains and markets uh, and other issues. Uh, today, we're joined by Jerry Mullins from the National Mining Association. Jerry, thanks for joining us. And can you just give us a brief overview of what the association does and what you do? Sure, Tony, thanks uh, for having me. Um, the National Mine Association really is the voice of mining uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, with the administration, with the Congress, and with the different agencies. Uh, we like to think that we are on the tip of the spear when it comes to trying to grow domestic mining in the United States and really drive home what the value of that uh, product is. Great, thanks. Um, sounds really fascinating. And I, I can't, from your perspective, looking at what happened in mining during COVID and post-COVID, there are a couple of questions I have. One is around continuity of operations. What did mining firms see around continuity of operations and the risks there, but also what did mining clients find with supply chain continuity? That's a real question. And that's something we saw a lot of issues around as countries like Peru and others just completely shut down. Well, I think fortunately, uh, domestic mining in the United States was deemed an essential industry. And so it was, it was allowed to continue to operate. And I think that's you know, really important to recognize uh, as an industry that they, were, they had the ability to absorb uh, all the different uh, new environments that a pandemic brought on and was able to successfully operate and continue to produce uh, the raw materials that were needed for multiple industries uh, across, across the globe. Um, as far as the effects of uh, other countries and perhaps how they were affected, I think, I think when, when you think about the global economies that generally slowed down, I think you know, a lot of folks hit a pause and, and had to, 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 to kind of recalibrate exactly what they were going to be able to do and the best way to, to do it. So I, I think all that kind of balanced through. But I thought that domestic mining in the United States played a real critical role in leadership of, so, of, of, of showing you know, the nation how to continue to work forward safely and effectively. Great, okay. Now, with kind of the supply chain um, disruptions and some of the geopolitical issues, um, there is a real sense in the US that there may be some supply chain security issues around uh, metals and minerals. Um, so can you help us with that? What is the association doing and what's happening with US manufacturers um, around uh, supply chain security with with the mining product? Well, that's an interesting point you bring up about the security issue, because just last month, the National Mining Association conducted a poll, and 64% of the respondents said they were concerned about the supply chain mm -hmm. uh, dynamics and how reliant uh, the U.S. was on uh, international supplies of different critical minerals. So I think you've seen a real uh, zest of, of uh, of excitement and certainly interest in, in focusing on the ability for U.S. producers to fill that gap and make sure that those critical minerals that are needed can be produced in the United States. And what that entails is sort of addressing some of the permitting challenges that domestic mining faces and finding ways to more effectively allow for U.S. mining to meet a lot of the demand that exists. Interesting. Okay, so when you talk about things like permitting and we talk about supply chain risks, one of the big kind of things that flag up um, is uh, rare earths. So can we talk a little bit about rare earths and understand for, say, the U.S. electronic sector and Department of Defense and, and other considerations, you know, what are some of the things that you're thinking about and your observations about um, rare earths in the U.S. and the exposure to rare earths from other places? Well, certainly the Department of Defense relies on 750,000 uh, tons of minerals each year, and that's for everything from armor for the individual soldier to armor on a tank to different requirements for jet engines uh, to telecommunications. I mean, when you think about everything from you know palladium to copper to gold to silver, you know, some rare, some not as rare, but those necessities are real. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that the opportunity 
for there being to be tremendous growth in the rare earth uh, uh, field in the country is is really opening up, and and that's something that you know uh, international investors as well as domestic investors are starting to recognize. Great, and then Jerry, I, I guess one of the other things we hear quite a lot about is um, is the green economy, uh, electric vehicles, battery technology, you know these sorts of things. Um, we hear a lot about you know those technologies accelerating at other locations, and maybe the U.S. has to catch up, or you know there are minerals from other places that the U.S. may or may not uh, produce. Um, how do you see U.S. miners contributing to uh, the green economy and battery technology and electric vehicles and and that whole section of the economy? Well, you know, I I think when you talk about battery technology and when you talk about uh, you know the the the, the electric the ele the electrification electric electrification of the auto fleet, uh, what you're talking about is copper, and you're talking about mass needs of copper, mass needs of gold, mass needs of silver, and able to satisfy the requirements. When you look at the wind technology and the and the the, the coking steel that's going to be required, the coking coal for making steel is going to be required to achieve uh, the goals that have been put, put out there. Uh, the American miner is absolutely part of, of that future. Great, perfect. Jerry, thanks so much for taking time today. I really appreciate this. And I look forward to speaking again, you know, as we see all of the supply chain issues with COVID and post COVID and the kind of re-normalized world play through, it will be really interesting to reconnect and, and hear some of your thoughts at that point. Thank you, Tony, I look forward to it. Thanks very much. Thank you.